everyone. My name is Lisa Wienhold. I'm the principal flutist of the Alabama Symphony Orchestra. Today I'm going to read a story called Mozart Finds a Melody. And in that story, Mozart has a pet bird, a starling named Miss Bims. And Miss Bims helps him to compose a melody for his new piano concerto. These are my dogs here. Leah, who's wearing a big bird headdress in honor of the occasion. And Fi, Fido. And I hope you enjoy the story as much as we do. Mozart Finds a Melody by Stephen Costanza. To Kristen, with love, with one note, the nightingale indicates the rose, Rumi. Mozart Finds a Melody. On a fine spring day in the imperial Austrian city of Vienna, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart glanced at the clock against the wall and sighed a great long sigh. Goodness me, he said, I must compose a new piano concerto to be performed this Saturday evening. Here it is Monday already and I can't think of a single note. For the first time in Wolfgang's life, the famous composer was at a loss for a tune. He tried every trick to get his imagination going. He sang standing on his head, Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. He played his violin in the bathtub. He even threw darts at the blank music paper, hoping that the holes would form an interesting melody on the staff lines. Alas, nothing worked. Oh dear, he said, what on earth am I going to do? Just then, Wolfgang's pet starling, Miss Bims, was waking from her afternoon nap and feeling very hungry. She sat up straight on her perch, shook her tail feathers a couple of times, and noticing that her bird feeder was empty, said, Hmm, said Wolfgang, looking up at the bird and rubbing his chin. Not bad. <coughs> said Miss Bims, getting quite hungry. Yes, yes, that was lovely, said Wolfgang, and he started scribbling down some notes. <coughs> cried Birdie, falling off her perch. That's it, shouted Wolfgang, jumping out of his chair. He danced a little jig on his way to the forte piano where he played the Starling's Melody. And what a fine melody it was, 17 notes in all. Bravo, bravo, a thousand bravos, said Mozart between giggles. The perfect beginning for my piano concerto, and I have you to thank, Koppelmeister Bims. Together we shall finish the concerto, and oh, how careless of me, there's no bird seed in your feeder. Well now, we can't compose on an empty stomach. Lunch is served. Wolfgang grabbed some bird seed, opened the cage door, and said, First, a thousand kisses from your humble friend. He closed his eyes and puckered his lips, but poor Miss Bims, unaccustomed as she was to being kissed, flew out of Wolfgang's hands and fluttered about the room. And the more she flew, the more alarmed she became. She fluttered under the forte piano, then flitted about the ceiling, after which she swooped under the desk chair, changed directions, and darted straight out the window. Miss Bims, cried Wolfgang, but the starling flew farther and farther away in great lopsided circles and appeared smaller and smaller and smaller. I must find her, cried Wolfgang. How else will I be able to finish my concerto? He seized the bird cage, threw on his top coat, put some bird seed into his pocket, and stepped outside to the street below.
Now, Wolfgang's apartment was located right on the Graben, which stood next to the Kohlmarkt, one of the busiest, brightest, and gayest of streets in all Vienna. Walking a few paces, the composer cleared his throat <clears throat> and cupped his hands to his mouth. Here, birdie, 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 sang Wolfgang. Come to me, my plumed little nubbin, my little beaked bagatelle, my feathered little chirpy. The good people of Vienna pretended not to notice the little man with the birdcage, but some couldn't refrain from pointing and talking among themselves. Surely Mozart has gone mad, they whispered. Oh dear, this will be much harder than I thought, said Wolfgang, looking all around for his pet friend. He whistled the starling's melody. What a charming tune she has given me. Soon enough, Wolfgang came upon Herr Schaffel, the baker, and catching him in the window of his shop, asked, Excuse me, Herr Schaffel, have you seen my pet starling? She's about this big. I need her to help me finish my piano concerto. The baker was about as simple as they come, and after hearing Wolfgang's story, he decided to play a joke on him. Why, of course I saw your starling, but unfortunately I didn't know it belonged to you. I am sorry to report that I baked the bird in a pie only ten minutes ago. And with that, Herr Schaffel was so pleased with himself that he let out a long, deep laugh. Ha 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 ha! Acknowledging the baker's wisecrack, Wolfgang rolled his eyes, headed straight for the door, then abruptly stopped in his tracks. Hmm, he thought, scratching his ear. Not bad. Ha 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 ha! bellowed Herr Schaffel. And the more he roared, the redder he became. Yes, yes, that was lovely, Wolfgang replied, and he scribbled down some notes. A little more vibrato, if you please, Herr Schaffel. Indeed, the shop began to shake at its very foundation, and the baker was so beside himself that he had to leave the room. My, these bases will do very nicely, said Wolfgang, looking at the page. Thank you, Herr Schaffel. Good day. And through the city continued Wolfgang, calling out for Miss Bims. He searched high and low for his dear friend, scattering birdseed along the way. And as he whistled the starling's melody, the sounds of the street began to play in his ears. The rattle of carriage wheels mingled with the squawks of geese and the barking of dogs. The hum in the coffee houses kept perfect time with the clanging of church bells. The entire town came alive with musical possibilities, and it all went into his score. Saturday evening arrived, and with a few hours to spare for rehearsal, Wolfgang finished the concerto. Relieved though he was, he worried about his little companion, and remembered how she helped bring his inspiration back. I shall dedicate this to dear Miss Bims, said Wolfgang, and he wrote his inscription on the front page of the score. Finally, the concert was about to begin, and in no finer place than the Berg Theater, the most splendid concert hall in the land. Wolfgang stepped onto the stage and bowed to the audience. Taking his place at the forte piano, he turned to the orchestra with his hands in the air, and all fell silent. A brilliant chord in G major rang out of the theater and rushed into the moonlit sky. A soft breeze shifted the notes before they climbed steadily higher, and up, up, up rose the magnificent harmonies of Wolfgang's concerto. Over the city the music soared, past the coal marked, beyond the Graben, even above the steeple at St. Stephen's Cathedral, the highest point in all Vienna. And there, hiding from the cold and shivering from beak to tail, was Miss Bims herself. Now, whether you have wings or not, the top of this particular cathedral is no place for anyone, especially if you're a hungry starling who has lost her way and has a cold into the bargain. Miss Bims was about to sneeze when suddenly she became very still. Was that singing she heard, or perhaps the wind? She stretched her neck out a little farther, straining to hear the familiar sound as it floated past her. 
Yes, indeed it was. She recognized her melody. And with that, Miss Bim summoned all her remaining strength and leaped into the night air. First to the left she flew, losing the sound before curving to the right, then straight ahead as the music grew louder and louder. Past the coal marked, beyond the grobin, the music growing louder still until at last she swooped down upon the roof of the Berg Theater and crept inside an open window. Flapping her tired wings as best she could, Miss Bims made her way to the upper balcony, not before ruffling a few feathers. She then took a deep breath and began to sing. The orchestra stopped as all assembled turned to listen to Miss Bims. She sang the melody of the concerto, and her little voice filled the entire Berg Theater. When she was finished, she dove off the balcony and landed right on Wolfgang's baton. Miss Bims, cried Wolfgang. Achoo, replied Miss Bims. My, we need to take care of that cold right away, whispered Wolfgang. A warm cup of tea with honey and some fresh cracked corn for you as soon as we get home. He then raised his arm and the orchestra began to play once more, this time with both Wolfgang and Miss Bims conducting. Later that evening, after a cup of hot chamomile tea, Miss Bims hopped back on her favorite perch, shook her tail feathers a couple of times, and settled down for a good night's rest. Wolfgang tiptoed up to the birdcage and puckering his lips, softly whistled the starling's melody. Soon one voice joined the other, and as their chirping and singing and chiming filled the room, a finer duet between two friends was never heard. At last, Miss Bim slowly closed her eyes as they reached the finale. Wolfgang checked the latch on the birdcage door, and before long, he too was fast asleep. <laughs>